Rain say 44 Nicholson. Um, Mr. Mayor, I received a letter from you guys with the numbers to contact for the public health and for Ministry of Environment. And I spoke to both and they conflicted information. Um, but I did understand for both of them that there was an actual testing to prove that we were okay. And that because they're waiting for what's going on with the tribunal and other stuff, that testing can't be done until then. So the fact that you guys are saying that we're not at risk doesn't make sense, especially when that phase two report states that the neighboring properties need to be tested. Um, I understand that you guys took possession of 86 high miss for back taxes. Why didn't you, at that point in time, leave it with reliance and add it to their bill and let them continue to deal with the issue and, and instead of you taking over? Because my question to you is, when you took over, why didn't you do can't hand me that? We never took over the city, uh, Madam. But what happens is, at a certain time of the year, if taxes are not paid on properties in Point Clair, and they are put up for sale through, uh, through an auction. Okay. And this is done here at City Hall. And uh, I can't tell you how many properties were put up for sale. We didn't own any of the properties. They, 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 they belonged to the owners. Uh, and there were many homes in Point Clair. Uh, you know, I don't think I'm exaggerating if I say maybe 100 houses. Everybody, these are people that are late in paying their taxes, and they're giving the final warning that on a certain date, your brother, the properties will go up on the auction block, and everybody comes in basically and pays off what they what they have to pay before that date. <coughs> and when the, the final date comes, there, usually there's only, maybe there's one, most of the time there's nobody. Everybody pays their taxes. In this case, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Maitre uh, Draco, there was the, the Reliance building uh, on Hymas Boulevard. They had not paid their taxes and it went up on the auction block. Is that exact? It did, Mr. Mayor. We did not own the property. But you, you took possession from them, so. No, no, uh, no. Uh, we never had possession of that property. No, the adjudicate of the, uh, the auction company by the name of Just MST. Right, and they paid eight hundred and eighty two thousand, which was eighty seven thousand more than was owed. Um, my question to you is that extra eight seven hundred thousand that the city received, why isn't that being used to test the properties? Because I understand that a phase two testing would have to be done in the properties of the residents. The money that we received from the just put a it has been put into the city coffers. Am I right, Mayor Jacob? Yes, it was, Mr. Uh, Mayor, and actually it did not cover all 100% uh, of the taxes. There was maybe two or three thousand dollars of taxes that uh, remained uncovered. <clears throat> Sorry. So, 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 what what we're, we're trying to reply is we never owned the property. Okay. The owners of the property did not come in and pay their taxes. It was sold at by auction, by auction, and it was picked up by a company called Jus Pour Investi. They are the owners of the property. And the prior owners to them was Reliance Power, right. which was not the city of Portland. Which owed ninety five thousand, but you sold it. It was sold for one hundred and eighty two thousand. So how were you missing it? I'm confused. I don't have the the, shit, the numbers. The, the amount uh, that uh, was paid at the time of the uh, auction was corresponding uh, to the amount that was owed at the time. And on top of that, there was a slight amount that was distributed by the court to uh, the school board for back taxes that were owed to the school board and also to pay for uh, some legal fees. $87,000? Taxes that were owed to the city, as I mentioned, were more or less, including uh, most of taxes owed to the uh, school boards, up to $182,000, corresponding to the amount that was paid that morning. Okay. Um, I also went on to the water plant site and looked up the last few years. I also noticed that in 2013, they're standing the same. Quarterly data is not there. 
and between March and July, the weekly, that is not there. Was there an issue with our water? Because I understand there was a leak at that point in time. I'm not sure I understand your question. You, you, you went to the water site on, on our webpage? The, the water plant, station site, for, for Point Claire, which I understand now has been taken on by a different... Uh, the agglomeration. And, right. But I know in 2013, Point Claire was taking care of it. And in that time, between March and July, there's data that's missing for the weeks. And for the quarterly data in July, it's not there either. Why is that? I have no idea. Do we do we put the data on the site now, or does the city of Montreal? It's, uh, it's done by the city of Montreal since the city of Montreal, through their agglomeration powers, now <coughs> operates the plant. It's not us anymore. I understand they took over 2014. Yeah, that's what I understand. I don't remember exactly when it was uh, transferred. It was either 2014 or 2015. Uh, I think it was 2014. And uh, since then, it's the city of Montreal who provides the information about it. Okay, Mr. Mayor, have you been have you been given a timeline when things will happen with provincial government? Right now, right now, as I read the, the documents that I read earlier. They, they're, the deadline for just for the seed to come up with a plan to decontaminate the site is June the 1st. And if they don't, what will happen? And if they don't, I will let the Director General answer this because it's with the, with a the court, not a court, but it's with the... Actually, the 1st of June is the line. The 2nd of June, theoretically, the government should take care of it and proceed, but they have to wait the decisions of the courts because uh, just what I see here is contesting the validity of the uh, decree from the government against them. And they have to wait the decision. That's from there on, everybody has to wait. We have no control of the courts. So. Okay, so if the provincial government takes over June 2nd, yes. What happens at that point? They'll time? have to wait the, the court decision before they can proceed. And the court decision is uh, just when it is contesting the right of the government to force them, which is until now has never been reversed by any court decision, but we have to wait the court decision. The government will wait for that. Okay. The residents of Point Claire that are living behind Reliance would like their soil tested with the proper testing, which I understand is a phase two environmental or phase three environmental. Why hasn't that been done? Madam, I, I, I've, told, I've mentioned on many occasions that the residents residing close to the Reliance site can continue to do whatever they were doing before this site was discovered to be uh, an illegal PCB site. You can, you can grow a garden. You can do whatever you wish on your property. Your children can go out. Your animals on your property. There's, there's no problem. This has been confirmed by the DISP, the the, the health department. I and, spoke to them. And and I could show you a copy of a letter stating that. I just read all that, and, and it's not. This isn't something that's being made up by the mayor or the council in the city of Point Claire. This is this is a document that we are receiving from the people responsible in the province of Quebec for contaminated sites. I understand. And when I spoke to the oh, individual... Do you have another question? Yeah. When okay. I spoke I to... Would, I would like to... I would ask you to please one more question okay. and then there are many people here who... Okay. I, I spoke to the a person from the, the public health and she had said to me that testing wasn't actually done and that they're hoping that when the cleanup would be done that they're recommending testing be done on the residents and according to environmental uh, Ministry of Environment, there's no testing and they don't know the extent because they're waiting. So my question to you is, is it just the letter you received or is it a report that showed? We have a letter. I can show you the letter. Okay, so there's no, no report stating it then? Stating? There's no report testing showing that we're okay. There, there is, no, no there isn't. There hasn't been any testing on private property of uh, residents or the, the companies. The, the, only the site has been tested. Thank you very much.
Bonjour, M. le maire, conseiller. Mon nom est Jean Boudreau, 358 Rimbaud. Point clair. Oui, c'est au sujet du, du site de 86 Arimus. Mm. On est tous conscients que le sol est contaminé. La question est, comment se fait-il aujourd'hui? On est resté travailler les employés de gaz métropolitain. Juste en avant du 86. Ils ont creusé un trou d'à peu près 10 pieds de large, de diamètre, peut-être 10 pieds profond, et les employés ont travaillé. Bien. Si le sol est contaminé, il n'y a pas de nous faire part. Là. Et j'ai demandé aux employés qui travaillaient là, est-ce que vous croyez que le sol est contaminé? Non. Comment non, non? Si vous travaillez, vous faites un trou dangereux, là. La santé. Mais tu l'avais de point clair. Vous n'avez rien dit. Vous êtes compagnie, vous n'avez rien dit. Et avant de partir, les employés ont dit, on va prendre un échantillon de sol. Il semble que juste... Le fait de savoir que c'est contaminé, l'employé qui a donné le permis, le tu as été accusé, hey, c'est contaminé, faites attention. Nous autres, on demeure à côté, là, on n'a pas de recours. Il n'y a pas de danger dans l'air, il n'y a pas de danger dans l'eau. Mais le sol est contaminé. Aujourd'hui, le monde travaille à là. Il travaille à là. Euh, je ne peux pas répondre à votre question. Je peux, je peux vous dire que le terrain de 86 Aimus a été, il y a eu de la caractérisation de fait sur le terrain. À l'extérieur du terrain, il n'y en a pas eu. Euh, oui, ça monsieur euh, Wimus, euh, est-ce que vous êtes au courant de qu ce que le monsieur dit qu'il y a une compagnie qui a, qui a fait des travaux en face de 86 Aimus? La seule chose que je sais, c'est qu'il y a régulièrement les travaux là. On en a mis les mêmes les entrepreneurs qui ont travaillé pour nous, qui ont travaillé sur le Je me souviens de quand même nous intervenir pour séparer les éco-fusions de la compagnie du réseau fluvial municipal. On a même mis une membrane dans la place pour empêcher une contamination éventuelle de cette circule vers la vie. Donc, autant qu'on sache, et sur les informations qu'on vous a données, il n'y a pas de contamination dans la nappe au niveau de la rue dans le sol. C'est ça la propriété même de l'ancienne la, propriété de la PPD. Le client, maintenant, je suis pas qu'il qu'il y a un problème de contamination. On n'a aucune information qu'il y ait de la contamination dans la rue, qu'on n'a pas de raison de croire non plus en fonction des tests qui avaient été faits au moment où on a fait des travaux. Là. Il y a une membrane qui empêche le, la circulation de la contamination éventuelle vers là. Tous les cas, faire un trou de, de, de 10 pieds profond en arrière. Merci. Merci beaucoup, M. Boudreau. question that, that I think is very important because you know very well that no one deliberately risks harming, especially the children. I have a four-year-old and a seven-year-old. And when you tell us it's okay to have a vegetable garden and feed even our children that, it's fine to say that, but no one would do it without concrete proof. I'm sure we would all agree to that. So my question is, how much would it cost, for example, to test the soil in my backyard or someone else's backyard? Um, in doing that, we would have a definite answer. Uh, I think everyone would feel secure if the results were negative. If positive, then we would know we would have to take action. This is my question, and I appreciate you listening. Okay, first of all, uh, the doctor, uh, I can tell you that uh, we have been informed by the doctor in charge of the, the health department for, for the city of Montreal, the island of Montreal. He has informed us in writing that there is no danger. Uh, you ask me how much it would cost to test the soil for, for an individual to test his own soil or for the city to go and test soil on private property. I cannot tell you how much it would cost. I have no idea. I have not, I haven't got a clue. And, and it is not our intention to do so because we have been informed that there is no danger for the health or the security of the citizens of Point Clair residing nearby 
or the people working right next door to the Reliance Company. This is the information that we get. Now, I can tell you that if, uh, if, the, if these people would have told us that there is a very severe danger and uh, something should be done immediately, that we, that we would be putting on as much pressure as possible on the federal, uh, the provincial government to, to do the necessary cleanup immediately. But they do not feel that it's necessary, and especially that it's in the courts right now. It's in the courts. They, we, they are asking the owners to clean it up at their cost. And this is going to be quite a suspect, substantial amount of money to do the cleanup on the property. And they are waiting for the, for the final decisions to come out and the court proceedings to be over with, and then they will do they will do the cleanup. They have assured the, the city of Point Clare, uh, the minister of the environment, Mr. David Hertel, has assured us that they will clean up the property and do what's necessary to try and recoup the funds. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other residents wishing to speak to council? Hello, my name is Brent Cowan, I'm one of the Cedar. I had uh, an issue with traffic, but it seemed fairly minor with uh, what's going on with the uh, I have a question about when the uh, city um, sold the property or gave, took the game from sale of the property to uh, Juste Porte Investia, did it occur to anybody to make either Juste Porte Investia thought they were getting rid of the deal and were ignorant, you know, they're, they're paying the price, or they, they really were. It did it occur to anybody to say that they were these new landlords that they had a million dollar liability in addition to their hundred thousand dollar steel? Just for the steel is an investment company, I understand. It, it's, it, it's the, the name of the company says that. Um, the only thing I can explain to you, Mr. Cohen, is that if I go buy a $250,000 house in Baudrey or anywhere, I will do my due diligence and make sure that uh, there's no cracks in the walls and that there's no problems with the house and uh, there's there's certain things that, that a normal person would do. I don't know what just what I just see what why they they bought it. This is a question you'd have to ask them. Do you not think as mayor you should know? Over this, I recognize that most issues you're absolutely correct. Most situations, but in this case. With the concerns of the city, the citizens have expressed they're worried about their health, their health, their children. So, are you, say, are, are you saying that they should have known? Well, would it not be a, a responsibility of the city to make sure that the new owners of this land knew what they were getting into? And if they wanted to buy it for 100000 recognizing they had a million dollar liability, that's fine. But if they were doing it because they were stupid, don't you think the city could have said, by the way, realize you're taking on a million dollar liability because they're fighting it now i understand because they they may be they may just think they got a uh, got lucky but the uh, provincial government hit a report according to just what i did so they found about this they found out about this report recently and that is why they're contesting the uh, government order to clean up the land well i won't make any comments because as you just said they are in court and uh, we'll see what will become of all this in the future. But all I can say is that uh, uh, the, the land, I believe, was on the contaminated land sites in the province of Quebec at the time. Am I right, Maitre uh, There were uh, notices that were, uh, there were legal architects that were published uh, at the Office of uh, Publication of Real Rights for anybody to acknowledge. Yes, I understand the reasons, but it sounds to me like uh, this is a ridiculous situation that should never been allowed to happen. The, 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 um, at the transaction, there should have been a commitment to clean up the land. That seems obvious. Whether there are rules and laws and regulations to make sure that would happen or not, politically, it's obvious that they should have. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from Point there? My name is Alex Sturm, leader of the Green Party of Quebec. Um, your address, sir, please? Uh, I live in NDG. And um, so I, I'm here to ask questions about uh, about the dust that's uh, coming out of the PCB site right now. Um, according to the Ministry of Health, the dust, the, the PCB contaminated dust 
uh, does not pose a hazard because according to them there's no trucks on the site and there's nothing that can stir up uh, dirt. You mentioned this in your opening statement. Now, uh, I find it very problematic that all of these things are based on assumptions. You know, you're assuming the fact that there's nothing going to stir it up. I mean, there, there's wind. And in the summer, this site's going to dry out. The sun's going to hit that contaminated soil. It's going to be picked up by the wind and distributed on the neighboring homes and also the workers who live right next door. Um, I put up a picture on our Facebook page of uh, the, uh, the soil drying out. And there's somebody who wrote to me saying that they, they were parked just on the other side of the fence. And that every uh, lunch hour now, uh, the employees come out of these businesses and they eat their lunch at picnic tables that are right next to the fence. Um, so I find it very problematic that uh, not only the City of Point Clare, but also the Ministry of Health are making these wide-ranging statements saying that everything is safe when, in the end, this is backed up by no scientific data whatsoever. And in terms of air contamination, the only tests that have been carried out have been inside two businesses neighboring the site in the winter, while the site was covered with snow. And despite that fact, these tests indoors, one of them was done closer to the door and showed that there was a certain amount of contamination. Uh, so you can just imagine that if these tests were done during the summer in the hot and windy months, that the results could be quite different. And if that were the case, there's people who have been exposed to these chemicals for the past three years. Now, do you, can you really say that you are confident in the answers that you're receiving from the provincial government on this matter? Well, I can tell you the, the point you brought up, Mr. Tyrell. We will bring this up with your concern. We will bring it up to the, the IFSP and the, we will get back to you with an answer. Uh, I can't tell you personally. But if you can't tell me, then do you retract the statement that you made at the beginning of the meeting saying that everything was safe? No, I, I won't retract anything that I said. Uh, what I've said uh, it comes from the, the authorities, mm -hmm. and uh, the, they are much more uh, knowledgeable than we are here as a council. But what I can tell you that your concern about the wind, uh, I'm, I don't know, they must have considered that there would be wind coming up uh, shortly, but we will ask them that question and we will give you the answer. They also told me that the residents wouldn't be uh, in danger from, from this dust because according to them there's trees in between the residents and and the site, and I don't think that that's a response that uh, has any scientific basis whatsoever. On another subject, no, the, no, no, just to finish, uh, for the residents, for the companies, we will put the question to them that uh, that, you, that you are concerned, and uh, that the dust, because in the summertime it gets drier, and there's wind, and there's dust in the air, and that you're quite concerned, and. Uh, you think that there could be a danger? We will ask them to, to answer the question. I will not answer it for you. You can ask them. The thing is, I've already asked them this question, and the response that they brought back was that since there was no activity on the site, that it didn't pose a risk. Well, then that's probably the answer that they'll give. And so, well, that's a pretty big answer. Um, so we will, I hope we won't get in touch with them if that's the answer they gave you, you've already asked them. With respect to the administrative tribunal, I find it very problematic that when we came here last month, uh, the city had put out a press release saying that we've crossed one of the final steps of the decontamination, that this whole thing is going to be taken care of very soon. I mean, in fact, last December, you put out a statement saying that the decontamination should be completed in the coming months. We're nowhere near the beginning of the work taking place. And I don't understand why, when the reality was that there was another two-month administrative delay that was issued, that the city of Point Clare put out a statement saying that we're one step closer to having the whole matter taken care of. Doesn't this seem a little bit incoherent? I think that we are getting closer to getting the site decontaminated because the deadline is June the 1st and hopefully shortly after that we will receive good news from the environmental department of Quebec. That, that is our, our biggest wish right now. But don't you think it should go a little bit faster? I mean it's three years, over three years after the spill at this point. Mr. Mr. Tyrell, uh, we cannot make the government of Quebec go faster. We cannot make the courts go faster. Well, after, after the spill happened. Excuse me, excuse me, I, I'm answering. We are doing our best. We are staying on top of the situation. We've been assured that the residents of Point Clare, their health, the, one, the residents living nearby, that there are no issues for their health and for the, the people that are working nearby. And as I said at the last council meeting, when there were the PCBs were there, and when it was a potential danger, uh, uh, I had three children living right nearby, three grandchildren, sorry, grandchildren, and uh, you know, it, it, 
right now we are, we've been assured by the government and by the health boards that everything is okay. I cannot give you any more information. And, and, and can you really say that if you owned one of the houses and that the people came up here just before me spoke about, if you owned one of those houses, would you let your grandchildren play in that backyard knowing that there's this dried out dust that's blowing around on the wind? Would you actually do that? Yes, I would. I live on the Glenbrook Crescent, which isn't very far from there, and uh, my grandchildren come there all the yeah. time. Well, I guess we should keep that in perspective, because at the last meeting you told us that somebody could eat the soil and that they wouldn't have a major problem. you stand by that statement as well? I stand by the staff statement, because that's what we were told, that somebody would have to eat or drink what's on the surface of that property in large quantities for it to affect them. That's what we've been told. So I stand by it. And, and today when the, the workers from Gaza Metal were digging in a zone that, that we know that the, the land slopes in that direction and in 2014 you found this contamination on the street, in, beneath the street. And now these people are digging on the other side of the street. There's no decontamination that's taking place. There's no testing that has been done. And these people are there and they're digging and they're playing and they're, they're, they're immersed in this soil. That Don't you feel bad about that? That question was already answered by our Director General. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to address council? Good evening. Ross did, uh, Pierre Font, 5020 Hotel. Uh, Which name, sir, please? Ross Stitt, S-T-I-T-T, -T, uh, What I'd like to do is, is there a, what I don't understand is when the question was asked about the legal requirements for the owner, or the new owner at the auction to be notified of the contamination. Uh, Maitre Jacob said that it would, well, or, or even prior somebody said it was on the website of contaminated sites and that it was, uh, I just want me to read my notes. I, I said that I believe it was on the, the website there. You're not, you weren't sure? You're, That's what I said. Oh, you believe, okay. Uh, Major Jacob said there was a legal uh, hypotext were published. What, what exactly does that mean, legal hypotext were published? Uh, legal uh, hypotech is an instrument that has been uh, prepared by the Department of Environment in order to ensure that they will be able in the future to recover uh, their, their debt from the person responsible. Okay, but at the auction was... Uh, it's taken against the property. So anybody would be buying the property would see this legal hypotech? Anybody would have been able to see it, yes. Okay. So that, that assumes that uh, the company that bought it uh, knew about the contamination, right? Sir, I won't uh, discuss the company that bought it. Uh, as uh, was okay. mentioned earlier, they're in court, and we'll let the courts decide uh, on whatever decisions have to be made, uh, we won't discuss. How did, who is the councilman for, is, is that Mr. Uh, Mr. Beaumont? Yes. How, does, how do you, I mean, uh, how do you feel about your residents' uh, concerns tonight? I mean, are you, are, are you in a full agreement with the mayor? Or do you have a different perspective? I mean, uh, as far as the concern of your residents? I have lived close to that site since it was built. I had three growing children, seven grandchildren, come and play, they play in the area, they play on Hymas Boulevard. I have no concerns, I trust, like uh, most people should. I believe that the government's department is doing their best, and certainly the city is. I have no, no problems with the site the way it is at the present moment, and we all hope that it'll be cleaned up ASAP. We're all standing behind that, there's no doubt about it. As far as the danger of PCB, uh, PCB in its liquid form, uh, you can wash your hands in it. I mean, we're getting a little over-exaggerated about the dangers, immediate dangers of it. Um, you can wash your hands in liquid PCB? You certainly can. And when it's broken down, and you can also put the salt, the chloride, on your french fries if you wish. I knew many workers that worked there, and I know nobody with health problems. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Stick. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address council? Ms. Kekat Ferdot, you will see the